All right, good morning and welcome to our first annual AUSA Warfighter Summit and exhibition. I can't tell you how excited we are to be here in Fayetteville. For those of you that know, this event has been a long time in the making and uh, we are extremely happy that it has all come together the way it has. And we have a great crowd, we've got a great lineup, and we're gonna have a great event. So thank you for being here. My name is Alex Brody. I am the Director of Meetings for the Association of the United States Army. And before I introduce our host, General Brown, just have a few customary uh, administrative announcements that I have to make. Your badge, please make sure you wear your badges at all times, they are required. Uh, if you misplace your badge, just go out to registration and our team will get you a new one. Show guide, our team worked hard on this tremendous show guide. It's got all the key information uh, for this year's event. Uh, if you need the latest program or updates, there's a QR code on page 10. Get your iPhone out, scan the QR code, you'll have all the latest information on this year's Warfighter Summit. We will have a reception in the exhibit hall each day. Uh, so please make sure you go in and take advantage of that. Uh, it'll be an opportunity to network and meet with other attendees, meet with our exhibitors who uh, have come a long way to display their products and services. And I do, uh, I do want to thank our exhibitors and sponsors who are here today. They've uh, come a long way, as I mentioned, to be here at this event. Proceedings and handouts will be available within about 48 hours after this year's event. So you can go to AUSA.org. Go to our website and you'll be able to find any proceedings uh, that we have here. Questions. I will go around during each panel with this question card and they are on each of the seats at the end of the rows. So we encourage you to fill these out, ask questions. Uh, we want you to fill these out and I'll pick them up, I'll hand them to, to the moderator and they'll get to as many questions as they can throughout each panel. So please take advantage of this it's a great opportunity for our audience to ask questions of each panel. Press. We have press at our events, so the ground rules are simple. We are on record and attribution, and we appreciate the press for being here, uh, so thank you. As I mentioned, we have about 60 companies here that are exhibiting, so during the break, please take some time and visit with each of the exhibitors so you can see the latest uh, services and products and technology uh, that they have for our great warfighters. Battle challenge, this is something new. While you're in the exhibit hall, make sure you go over uh, and visit the nine station obstacle course. It is a uh, opportunity for our warfighters to compete against each other. We have two great prizes. Uh, we have a Yeti filled that we're giving out to the top male and female times, so we hope that our warfighters and anyone that wants to take advantage of it will run through the nine station obstacle course called our Battle Challenge. Uh, I think SMA has already signed up to run it and uh, he's going against General Haley later today. So if you want to see General Haley and SMA run it, they'll be doing it today, uh, this afternoon. Is that correct, SMA? Oh. Membership, who here is a member of AUSA? Ah, that's fantastic. General Brown, half the room, raise your hand. For the other half, please look at the cameras, smile. We'll review the tapes later, and we will be uh, reaching out to you about your uh, membership. No, in all honesty, if you're not a member, or even if you are, please just stop by our membership booth. Speak with Christine Lathrop and the great team from AUSA that are here, and they're happy to talk through your benefits, or if you're not a member, sign you up today. We uh, are a membership organization, and membership counts at AUSA. Wi-Fi uh, internet is available, so just log on to uh, the AUSA attendee, which is the passcode, and it's 2022 Warfighter to connect. As is our custom, we will not give lengthy introductions for our speakers, but we do want all of our guests today to know that we appreciate all of your past accomplishments and acknowledge your professionalism and dedication to the Army, so thank you. And finally, I just ask that you silence any of your uh, cell phones or uh, iPads that make no noise so that I can introduce the President and Chief Executive Officer of the Association of the United States Army. Please put your hands together for General Robert Brown. That was my warm-up for the battle challenge right there. Uh, 
and, and uh, Dan Allen, where'd you go? There you are. I, th I tried to get them to do a 60 and over category. They just, they just wouldn't do it, you know, but uh, we might try, we might try it anyway. So, hey, welcome everybody. It's, it's great to be here at Fort Bragg. You know, I'm really glad to see you in the audience because you never know, the first time you do an event, could be like five people here and that's it. But we, we had a feeling it would be very popular uh, at Bragg and, and have wanted to come here for years. So uh, thanks for joining us uh, for the uh, Warfighter Summit and Exposition and uh, first uh, ever. And uh, I can guarantee it'll be the best ever, which is good news. And then we'll see, we'll take a look. Uh, this, does this become an annual event? Uh, really uh, exciting couple of days when you look at the, the panels that we have, uh, the education and professional development that'll be happening they're just tremendous. Everything from uh, community grit is one of the panels, which I'm really looking forward to. Uh, we're talking the future uh, of irregular warfare with uh, special operations, talking the nature of the battlefield, equipping the future force, innovation at the edge, uh, and then some incredible keynotes, uh, starting off this morning with uh, General Pappas, but then Chief of Staff of the Army tomorrow morning, General McConville will be here, and Sergeant Major of the Army, Grinston, will finish up uh, tomorrow afternoon with a, with a keynote before uh, a panel for sure. So uh, amazing uh, forums and looking forward to, to seeing everybody here for that. Um, incredible industry support, some 60 plus companies, all warrior, warfighter focus. That was the purpose. And that's, you know, we made a key decision also uh, OCPs, which I think is great instead of, you know, having to just, it's warfighter focused and then no ties. So I saw some people out there I uh, already took off their ties, yeah, we got some blood, but if you still have a tie on, we might come around and cut it off if we have to here later, but you should take off those ties, relax, uh, and again, warfighter focus, so let's, let's all be comfortable, get over to the displays. All the, uh, the companies, uh, you know, just uh, have amazing, as we all know, uh, you, we can't do what we do uh, as a military without the support of industry and providing the best equipment, and you're going to see some incredibly uh, innovative uh, ideas next door and, and the best of the equipment. So I just say get out uh, on the floor. Uh, you know, as, as was mentioned, lunchtime will be out there. There'll be, I uh, forgot to mention, there'll be food <laughs> for that uh, over uh, next door at lunch, but then get out and see the exhibits. A huge thanks to the Forcecom team uh, who helped us putting all this together. Uh, you know, this, again, doing it for the first time, all the things going on in the world, it's not like there's not a lot going on. So I just want to thank Forcecom and then the Braxton Bragg chapter of AUSA. You all just went above and beyond, and thanks very much, Al, the, the whole team. Really appreciate all you did to help put this together. Uh, the battle challenge, you know, that is, is going to be ongoing all day today and tomorrow. And I would just say, uh, you know, Alex mentioned a, a Yeti cooler full of stuff, but there's some really neat stuff like the Galveon bump helmet uh, for the winner, uh, male and female, and that, that alone is worth, I was even thinking about doing it, as I mentioned earlier, just to get that, it a great, be a great bike helmet out there, protect you, but, uh, but there's some tremendous gifts, and uh, go cheer folks on, and again, it's open to anybody, uh, but uh, hoping to see some folks out there for the battle challenge. Also, I want to thank, you know, you can't do any of these events without sponsors helping out. And again, brave sponsors, I would say, because again, when it's a first time event, you, you just don't, you know, when it's something that's ongoing and you know you're going to get uh, huge crowds and lots of industry. So we really want to thank the sponsors. Campbell University, uh, thanks very much for helping out. The Economic Development Partnership of North Carolina, you all are great. Thanks for your sponsorship. GEICO sponsoring that battle challenge. Huge sponsor of that battle challenge, enabling us to do that. Uh, North Carolina Military Affairs Commission, thank you for your involvement in helping us prepare and plan all this, and uh, really appreciate it. And then uh, this morning's breakfast, which is great, uh, and the coffee and everything else is provided by Valiant Integrated Services, and uh, so thanks for their sponsors. I just want to, you know, mention uh, the sponsors because they're so important. All right, so let's begin the, the first day, uh, and uh, again, our first, our first speaker, no pressure at all, Drew, whatsoever, the first speaker at the first warfighter ever, uh, but we're really honored, uh, our first speaker this morning, uh, a true warrior with incredible experience. Uh, throughout his impressive career when you look. You know, he uh, commanded a battalion right here at Bragg, the uh, 3rd Battalion, 504th Parachute Infantry Regiment, 
uh, and, and deployed uh, with them to Iraq, and then uh, commanded 1st Brigade Combat Team in 101st, would later be DCG in 101st, and would later command 101st, and I think in all of those roles deployed to Afghanistan. Uh, and then you're going to see him today, I think, uh, smiling a lot, as we were talking, because uh, the last three years he's been doing tough, tough duty for our nation. All that's been going on is uh, the J J3 operations in the Pentagon and the director of the Joint Staff, incredibly tough jobs. So he is so happy to be out of the Pentagon, uh, he can't stop smiling, I'm certain, and we're glad he's out of the Pentagon. And now with the largest command in the Army, that's pretty cool. You know, to say you're, you're commanding the largest organization, the United States Army, pretty awesome. As he's a 24th commander of uh, United States Forces Command. So uh, I would just ask you, please uh, join me in a warm welcome uh, for General Drew Pappas, Force Comm Command. Well, first, I want to welcome everybody to the inaugural Warfighter Symposium down here. Uh, but I'm going to start off because what's not inaugural today is today is also the Force Com Command Sergeant Major Sims' birthday. So you follow, young man. And he too will be out there on the challenge, all nine obstacles. And he's a little physical beast, Sergeant Major, I'm telling you. He'll be your competition. But General Brown, I'll tell you one thing that's absolutely humbling for an introduction to come from you as an officer and as a leader who I've had the depth of respect for throughout your entire career, uh, to have you say those kind words and to be introduced by you, thank you very much. And I also think that we all owe him a thanks because he was able to pull and bring an event of this magnitude for AUSA out of Washington, D.C., and then bring it down here to the warfighters and into the incredible military support work network all around North Carolina and here in Fayetteville. So thank you for doing that, sir. And I just want to highlight, when I talk about Fayetteville and the support network, uh, I just want to highlight Stephen Moore's right there. And I just want to tell you, we talked about that time frame with uh, 30 the 05 and 573 deployment to uh, 15 months in Iraq, which is a long time. And over that time frame, when I talk about the support of a community and being fully invested and woven into the fabric of a community, it starts right there. And over that time frame that we were gone, both prior, both Stephen and Gene here in Fayetteville, they embraced not just our family, but the entire family of the squadron. And over that long time frame, we lost 22 and over 100 wounded. And each time an event came up, Stephen and Jean were the first one reaching out to my wife. Stephen and Jean were the first ones reaching out to the families and setting the environment in order to take care of them. And I think that, Stephen, I'm looking at you right now, and I know you're embarrassed. He said, please don't, but I'm doing it. And I'm just telling you that But what I see in Stephen, I see throughout this city. And it, though he's the physical embodiment that's here today, that's indicative of this entire city and the community. So, Stephen, thank you very much, and to all in Fayetteville. <laughs> and we've got incredible, incredible guests that are here, all very distinguished. And as I look at the leadership from my old neighbor, Sergeant Major, that's here, as, as we were joking, walking in here, and it's been, I'm, I've been here for two weeks, and at every one of these events, I've had the opportunity to punt to death and bump into mentors that have been here with me, leaders that have taught me what right looks like, neighbors that I've been able to hang out with. And I want to tell you, you have let me and set me up to be here today. And I appreciate that. And for, for General J.B. Bell, he said he was most appreciative that on this speech we're actually indoors and not like the change of command where it was 100 degrees. So <laughs> we've done that. But I appreciate your support for everybody that's here and all that have come into this and the perspectives as we're going to share the Army's major initiatives at the soldier level. And as I look at those who have attended today, I especially want to welcome those in the audience who are at the soldier level, because this is your event. General Brown touched upon that. AUSA literally created and crafted this. So you look at the agenda, you look at the events with you in mind. And the only reason, and the key reason, the panelists are going to be up here today, that the exhibitors are here, is to engage the junior soldiers who at that front edge that are fighting and winning our nation's wars. So hence the name, Warfighter. So what we're going to talk about over the next two days during this symposium are the things we do to be ready to fight and win our nation's wars, because that is what the warfighters do. And many of you in the audience are no stranger to warfare and combat. Just as I look out here, how many of you 
I'll go back all the way to Desert Storm. How many of you served in Afghanistan or Iraq over the last 20 years of continuous conflict? That's a lot of hands that are out there. Let me ask, who was at HKIA last summer? Incredible. And how many of you have just come back from or have buddies that are still in Europe today? First, I'm incredibly proud of you, and I'm absolutely proud of what our soldiers have done in the name of freedom and keeping our nation safe. And for you that are out there, and I saw it's a core back there, last August, I think it's a point of pride that many of you helped deliver 124,000 plus Americans, allies, and partners to the safety and the largest airborne non-combatant evacuation in our history. That was a Herculean effort in very contentious times and location. And just earlier this year, and continuing today as we speak, the 18th Airborne Corps and the 82nd Airborne Division with Chris Leneve, the commander, right there, they again launched in the face of crisis. And this time, to galvanize our allies and deter against the acute threat of Russian aggression. Within days, the whole formation was forward on the continent, facing off against the foe. And you can see how it did galvanize the resolve of our, of our partners that were over there as they clamored for more support. And in a span of 158 days, this shows the strength of our Army. The soldiers at Fort Bragg, they closed one chapter of an American war fighting experience. All the while, they took the first major steps towards deterring the next. So Chris, congratulations to you and your team. But the Army's work is never complete. We exist to fight and win our nation's wars. You're gonna hear that refrain over and over. So we must be ready for what comes next. America is entering a new era of global security challenges and with it, we are ushering in a new generation of war fighters. Many of those are in the formation here today. And just as I was one of the many soldiers who spent the years preparing to face that Cold War era Soviet Union that fought with the Desert Storm time frame of large formations, only to be thrust into an entirely different type of conflict post 9-11. We, we were able to transition, just as today we're prepared to tackle today's generational shift back to those large-scale combat operations. Because in this formation, you can see it. It's the soldiers, it's the non-commissioned officers, it's our junior leaders. They're committed, they're disciplined, and they're masters of fundamental warfighting skills. And it's an exciting time to be a soldier because this is a time of momentous change. And through this change, the constant that keeps us grounded to our mission is the readiness of ourselves and that of our forces. It's our solemn duty. And when we're not an army at war, we must be and we are an army at the ready. Now readiness is the means through which we lives are saved, the first battles of the next war are won, and the American options are preserved. But inevitably, and I see it at Forcecom, in our pursuit of readiness, the question always arises, hey, sir, ready for what? What do you want me to prepare for? What is that threat that's on the next ridgeline, over the horizon? And it's an absolutely fair question. It's one I have to answer. I have to answer it to the little groups of paratroopers that are out there on the battlefield. I have to talk to the tankers that are out there, the air assault warriors. How do they stay ready? How do they prepare for an increasingly complex world? Now this afternoon, General Leneve over there, a good friend of mine, and a couple other leaders are gonna join me for a panel. We're gonna be discussing just that. And that's discussing the changing character of war, the changing character of war. But before we even get there, Chris, when the mission's uncertain, that destination's unknown, as the good cadence goes, the readiness of our legions at home, it begins with the personal readiness to do three things. First, we have to train. As leaders, we have to engage. And as a formation, we have to change. So your readiness to train, that draws from that warrior spirit that's ingrained in each and every one of us. I mean, I've seen it firsthand, the best teams the absolutely best formations are those warfighters who train and retrain on the fundamentals. And they don't do it until the task is right, but they continue to execute until they're incapable of getting it wrong. That's professionalism. That's proficiency. And that takes discipline. It takes physical fitness. It takes access to the most up-to-date equipment, training in realistic conditions, and an absolute winning attitude. But it also takes that leader engagement, 
that leader engagement that coaches, it teachers, it mentors, it develops the young soldiers, and it provides the time and space to allow them to focus on that training. And then it turns those individuals into a team. And that's why the second point is your readiness to engage. It's uniquely vital to our unit's mission. And when I talk about engagement, when I speak to the leaders in the formation, I'm elevating it up to the leaders in the formation, I talk of the importance of engaged leadership. There's a quantifier, engaged leadership. And that's physical presence. And I'll tell you, it starts at the PT formation at 0630. The expectations our major and I have is that's where it's at. At 630, I expect they fall in. That team leader, that squad leader, right there, leading the formation, looking left and right, eyeball to eyeball with the subordinates. Right face, you want to lead, you step off. And you're leading starting at the beginning with PT. And you're setting the example by your personal, personal physical fitness. And that carries over into field training. You use the expertise that you've grown as a junior leader, the senior leader, walking through, teaching what's right. But you've got to be present. You've got to be present. You've got to be engaged. And I expect leaders to look each soldier in the eye every single day. And they get to know you, you as an individual. They get to know your family. They need to know what your goals are, what your inspiration is. And then my expectation, that leader, he's going to drive you. He's going to drive you to excellence. That's important, driving you to be better. Because there's a sense of ownership of that formation. That's my team, my squad, my platoon company, my force comp. Ownership, an ownership of the individual, because the Army's about people. And in turn, for those individuals, I trust that you are prepared to engage back. And that engagement's got to be face to face, not by text, not by an email. Your leaders have to know what you need, where you're at, so they can help empower you and provide you those resources to succeed. That's the human dynamic of leadership. And finally, as I said earlier, we're in a time of change. So we, as individuals in a formation, must be ready for that change. It's a time of innovation. And that innovation in talent management, it's innovation in technology and equipment and our doctrine it's our training methodology that's all coming our way. And it's up to the line unit and to the force comm soldiers to implement the investments that we're making in each one of those. So for you out there in uniform, if you like the Army the way it is now, that's great. But I need you to get involved with change at your level to help us keep the things that make us great, great, and continue to improve. If you're not happy, and if you don't like where you're at, actually that's sometimes even better. But then you need to be part of the solution. You need to have your voice heard. It needs to resonate to tell us what else must change before the next fight comes. Everything we're going to talk to today at the Warfighter, it revolves around change. Because we're focused on the future and the future fight and preparation for such fight. I ask that each of you make the most of this opportunity. And I tell you, it's the Warfighter Forum. It is your forum. So if your friends aren't out in the formation, or if you're a leader, and you don't see your folks on the panels or at the battle challenge, give them a call right now. Tell them whatever they're doing, come down. Be a part of this. Be a part of this forum for the future. Be a part of the conversation. And I want them to be here. Especially I want them to be here tomorrow. Because tomorrow you're going to get the Chief of Staff of the Army and the Sergeant Major of the Army. If you want to see where the Army's going, those are the voices that are going to be here. It's enlightening every time they speak, because they have the pulse of the entire formation. So for everybody that's here, I want to thank you again for coming out, being a part of this. And thanks in advance for taking the things that you're going to discuss here today back into your teams, into your squads, your platoons, each of your formations for focused discussions about the ways that you and your formation can be ready for the next fight. As I said at the beginning, that mission, mission unknown, destination unknown, but the future of our Army is bright. I'm proud to serve with each of you, Freedom's Guardian. Thank you.